everyone, my name is Chelsea and welcome or welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are doing a NetGalley bookshelf tour. So in case you are not aware, NetGalley is a site where you can request digital ARCs and you can either get approved from them or not, and then you read them. Usually, they hope that you read them before the release date so that you can then post a review on like Goodreads or Amazon or I do it on my booktube channel too. Um, so yes, this is something that I have been pretty good with for the beginning half of every year that I've been doing it. And then life happens and something gets pushed back. And so we're going to talk about the things that I have for 2024, as well as some things that I technically still have on here that are backlist now. Every so often you will get a publisher that has posted uh, an arc that is actually for a book that's already been released. Um, but I find that happens a little bit more with manga versus like actual traditionally published books. Uh, and then you also sometimes will request something the first time you see it, months before the release date, and your request sits pending until like the week before the book comes out. And then by that time, it just feels like you just don't have enough time to actually like slot it in depending on like what else you're doing. Because I mean like on my channel I have reading vlogs and like TBRs and things that I've already have planned. So every so often that'll happen and that'll mean a book doesn't get read right away. Um, but yeah, mostly I wanted to make this video as something to hold myself accountable because of the fact that I do have some backlist books on here that I wanted to talk about. Um, let you guys know what I'm working with on NetGalley. I will say, and we'll go through this so you guys can see everything, um, they want your feedback ratio, so things that you get approved for versus things that you actually have written reviews for, um, to be at 80%. And I know there are a ton of people, I'm not calling anybody out, but there's a bunch of people that have very, very low percentages. For some reason, they still get approved for things, and this is like a publisher thing. They will sometimes approve a ton of people for books, even if their review ratio isn't the highest. I'm currently sitting at 75. I don't think I have ever personally hit 80% in years. Like maybe the first time I used this when I was only having a couple things. Um, but I'm working my way up there. The highest I've gotten in the last year or so is probably like 77. I'm currently sitting at 75, so I'm, I'm still very happy with my total. But I do want to get it to that 80%. So let's just take a look at like what we're dealing with here. So the first thing that I have is I actually do have my NetGalley on my like bookmarks so that I can always pull it up and it comes up to my profile. So I do have my feedback ratio is 75%. I have been approved for 144 books and I've sent feedback for 108 and this is over the entirety of me using NetGalley. Apparently I've been a member since 2017 which is actually the year I started my booktube channel in December of 2017. Um, I might have started my NetGalley right before then so it has been a while um, and so when you are on here you can then go to your shelf and that's what we're gonna be looking at today is my shelf what things do I have on here and we're gonna be sorting it by publication date we're gonna be talking about the 2024 releases first and then we will go into the backlist things that I have here the things that I do need to be held accountable for um, so just starting at January of 2024, um, I do have one book that is past the release date, but you might recognize this title because it is Say You'll Be Mine by Naina Kumar. That is actually going to be my Patreon book club pick for February. I picked this before I got approved for it, and I really, really want to read this one, so I decided to actually save it, even though it is past the release date, to read it closer to the actual going to be like the meeting and everything for the Patreon book club. So I will be reading it next month. That is the reason I have not read it yet. Um, this is going to be a romance um, that I think is like a sort of fake dating thing because they're going to weddings and stuff and I'm very very excited for it so this will be read shortly it just hasn't 
been read yet. I also have All Roads Lead Here by Mariana Zapata. This one comes out on January 30th, which is actually, I think, the day you guys are seeing this video. The day that I'm filming this is the 28th. I've actually already started reading this one. I have high hopes to finish it by the release date. Um, I love Mariana Zapata's work. It's very slow burn romance, and um, I'm already really enjoying it, even though I'm about 60, 70 pages in. So this one is something that will be read. Moving into February, I have The White and Blue Between Us by Kiyohiko. This is a manga. Um, I actually, this is the third manga since the beginning of the year that I have been approved for. I've already read two in January and reviewed them. Um, and so this is coming out February 13th. I believe this one is an LGBTQ, like, high school, going into, like, past high school sort of stuff. Um, and I'm very excited to check this one out. Um, then in March, on March 12th, we have Those Beyond the Wall by Micaiah Johnson. Um, this is the, like, sequel or companion novel to The Space Between Worlds, which was one of my favorite books when that came out. That actually was another book that I had an arc of on NetGalley, read it, loved it, bought the physical copy because I needed to have my hands on it, and so I have the sequel. I'm very excited to read that one as well. Then going into April, on April 9th, we have Ghost Station by S.A. Barnes, another one where I read a different book by this author. I read Dead Silence, which I have right here as well. I read that as an arc a couple years ago. Again, absolutely loved it. Five out of five stars. Bought myself my own copy because I needed to have it. And so I had requested this book as well and got approved. I think publishers do have a way of tracking like things that you have been approved for or not in the past because I do seem to get duplicate sometimes like if I've read something as an arc and have read it on time and reviewed it I am more likely it seems like to get either a sequel or something else by the same author on April 16th we also have Late Bloomer by Maisie Eddings see this is another one that is the exact same sort of thing I read the plus one as an arc last year absolutely loved it I do have the copy actually back here behind this pile of books so I'm not gonna get it but I bought myself a copy of it because I loved it so much and I got approved for another Maisie Eddings book. Um, this one, I believe, is going to be a sapphic romance, and I'm very excited. Um, moving into June 11th, we have The Stars Too Fondly by Emily Hamilton. I don't particularly know what this one is about anymore, but when I requested it, it was because it was going to be a sci-fi adult novel, I believe it is. Um, and I don't know if this is her debut or not, but... I definitely have that one as well. And then on June 25th, I have Rules for Second Chances by Maggie North. Um, this is going to be a romance. I believe it's going to be a second chance romance of some sort. Um, and so currently, I only have books on NetGalley up through June. As you go through the year, they will obviously put more things up on there. And NetGalley is one of those places of where I find new releases. I will come on here a few times a week. Anytime that I'm coming in and like filming something or editing something, I almost always end up checking on NetGalley um, and seeing if there's any new things put on there. And this is where I get a lot of information for new releases coming out throughout the year. So those are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books that I currently have for 2024. Like I mentioned before, I've already read some stuff in January. I want to say there was one book that I read and DNF'd. Um, and then there was two mangas. So three books so far I've already read as arcs for January. Um, let's now go down and talk about the backlist stuff I have on here. Because I currently have 34 books on my NetGalley shelf. Yes, I know that is quite a bit. It is a little intimidating. And only eight of them are for this year. So that means we have some other stuff on here that are backlist. Things that I do need to get to. And I just haven't yet, so that's part of the reason I wanted to make this video. I want to be held accountable for this. So let's move into 2023. I have Gwen and Art Are Not In Love by Lex Croucher. This is one of those books that I requested months in advance and only got it like the week before it came out. I do have a physical copy of this now from Rainbow Crate, and it is something that I do want to read. We also have Find Him Where You Left Him Dead by Kristen Simmons. This is going to be more of like a horror or thriller mystery sort of book. Um, and as you can see, a lot of these 
titles that I have here that I didn't get to finish or even start are from around August or September of last year. That's when Presley started school and if you have been on my channel for any amount of time, you know that we had some issues getting him like acquainted with preschool and like getting him into class and like really getting that to a good spot and so my reading tanked around that time and I just was not able to catch back up with arcs especially so these are things I do want to read I will get to them uh, I also have the improbable tales of Baskerville Hall by Ali Standish this is a middle grade like if Arthur Conan Doyle was a student with the kids that ended up being like the inspiration for Sherlock Holmes and that kind of thing um we have The Name Drop by Susan Lee. I think this is a YA romance. I could be mistaken on that, but it's going to be like a K-pop sort of one. Uh, we have The Blue Beautiful World by Karen Lord. This is an adult sci-fi that I wanted to read. Uh, we have Where Peace is Lost by Valerie Valdez, another adult sci-fi that I wanted to read. And Where Echoes Die by Courtney Gold. This is a YA paranormal one, I'm pretty sure. I had a different Courtney Gold that I read on NetGalley a couple years ago that I did enjoy um, and so I requested this one and again just did not get to it um, so those are the 2023 ones moving into 2022 because yes I do have some of those um, we have Ocean's Echo by Evermina Maxwell I actually have a physical copy of this one now um, I don't know why I didn't get to this one but I, I didn't it's something that I really really loved because i loved Winter's Orbit and so I wanted this book and I requested the arc and I bought the book and I did not read it yet. It's adult sci-fi. Um, we have When Life Gives You Vampires by Gloria Duke. This one is going to be a paranormal romance but I've heard some mixed things about the actual like plus size nature of the main character. I do want to read this one. I'm a little bit more hesitant now, but I mean, obviously I have it as an arc. I'm going to eventually read them. Um, I do have Barbarian Mind by Ruby Dixon. Um, this is, I think, the fourth book in the Ice Planet Barbarian series. I actually have this as a physical copy as well, because a lot of the times if I request arcs, I know I want to read the book and I probably am going to own it as well. Um, so I think that's one of the things that doesn't make me feel as bad for having some arcs that are very very old is I still supported the author with a lot of these and I have given them my money already so uh, I do want to read that I also have Fault Tolerance by Valerie Valdez another Valerie Valdez I do feel a little bit bad about that this is the third book in a series that I've been really really enjoying because it reminds me of Mass Effect a little bit and I, I need to continue with that um, I have Wild is the Witch by Rachel Griffin this is a YA witchy one I actually already have this as a physical copy as well, so she has my money. Um, we have American Royalty by Tracy Livesey. I need to read this as well. It's an adult romance. Flip the Script by Lila Lee is a YA romance. Um, this is the same author as I'll Be the One, which I have on my favorite shelves back here. Like, I need to read this. Uh, we have Once Upon a K-Prom by Kat Cho, another YA romance sort of focused one. Go Hex Yourself by Jessica Clare. Um, this one's adult witchy romance, I'm pretty sure. Then moving into 2021, we have The Grimrose Girls by Laura Pohl. This is one that I started and did not finish for some reason. It is one that is YA and I think it's sort of fairy tale esque and I think it's also mystery. So I need to check that back out. Um, Wicked As You Wish by Rin Chupeco, another YA one. Um, Activation Degradation by Marina J. Lostetter is an adult sci-fi that I wanted to read. Summer Suns by Lee Mandelo is a horror-based one. This is another one that I started reading and I didn't finish. And when I say I didn't finish, I didn't DNF them necessarily for both Grimrose Girls and Summer Suns. I don't know why I stopped reading them, but like if I didn't actually DNF them, like I'm going to go back to them. If I would have been like, this is not for me, or there was something about it that I hated and I DNF'd it, I actually would have written a review stating that, and it would be off my list. So I don't 100% know why. Um, we have My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. That's another horror. Um, if the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy, an adult Cinderella retelling romance. I need to read that one. It's Raining Men by Julie Hammerall. She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. I have a copy of that one as well. That I need to read. Flash Fire by TJ Klune is a YA sequel 
to The Extraordinaries, which I did enjoy, but I feel like I read that one so long ago to getting approved for Flash Fire. I wanted to reread the first one, and I just haven't yet, so that's why I didn't read that. And then The Burning God by R.F. Kuang is actually a 2020 release that I started trying to read before this book was released in 2020, um, and I ended up not finishing my reread of the first two books and I'm so intimidated by this third book that I never picked it back up to read it. So that's the last one I have on this list. I only have one from 2020 and I have about eight for each year since then that I haven't finished. So yes, I know exactly how this looks. Um, I need that accountability apparently because I do so well at the beginning of the year, every year. Like, I don't know if you guys were able to tell, but like, as you go through every single year, the beginning months of that year, they're not on there because I've read the things. <laughs> it's the second half where something happens and I get slowed down or things get pushed back and then the motivation to make sure things get done goes out the window a little bit. Is anybody else, does anybody else feel that way? Um, like if it's not on time, it goes out the window. So yes, I want to be held a little bit more accountable for that. This is something that I'm putting out there. Not necessarily that saying like you guys have to hold me accountable, but I'm putting it out in the world to let you know that I want to do better. Um, and so, so far in 2024 at least, we've been doing okay. It's barely the end of January. But I've already read three things. I'm on my fourth. I have plans for the next few months. And so, yes, this is my NetGalley bookshelf tour. Um, if you guys want a video about like how NetGalley actually works and like how to start a NetGalley thing, let me know down below because I'm very much willing to do that if that's something that you would like. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos. I do have videos coming out on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so I will see you then. Bye.